this is some follow-up to the crash. Put the collar on, used the, uh, turned the outside and the bottom, and I got just a little lip there. I'm about 10,000, the collar's 10,000 above the original nose of the uh, uh, spindle. Anyway, I've got a ground rod in here with the same three-quarter inch TTS collet that was in there when it crashed, okay? And so, uh, there is roughly a half dial. I would have had to have measured it beforehand. I, I, offhand, I don't know whether or not it was uh, more accurate than that or not. I'm going to pull it out of the way. We're going to uh, drop this out. I'm going to move that rod over to a new collet, and we'll see. I love that draw bar, huh? Man, uh, that that was that was a huge factor in picking the Novacon was uh, Ray's Ray Livingston's, who is Santa Cruz Engineering Group. Um, because then I could run R8 collets in and out, that kind of stuff. So let me come around to the other side here and turn it. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, pretty much exactly the same. It's just maybe a hair over half thou. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's not the collet. So I, I feel safe in running the old collet. <coughs> I'm afraid I've still got some more learning in me. So I'll put that one away for later. One thing is, is if you hit the up arrow, it's going to go all the way up until it hits a certain torque. Okay? So I'm going to put this three-quarter inch shaft in here again so that it can seat, and then I'll do a, a, a tool release. Otherwise, I've got to scramble around and grab another tool and put it up in here because I really don't want to run that collet all the way up in there hard like that. Uh, Ray says that can damage the collet and everything, so I don't want to do that. So by having this rod handy, basically that'll let me uh, prep it. Now it's ready for whatever other tool. And the next tool I'm going to put in there, I want to see how the chuck factor, how the fared with all that. All right, now I'm dealing with some parallax error because I'm looking at it from an angle here. So it looks like about a thou. thousands of uh, TIR. Okay. Um, let's, let's turn the rod. Pretty much same position. Just a hair different. Oh, dang it. I actually meant to. Tighten them all in the same plane. Tighten them all in the same plane. What the hell does that mean? I was going to snug all the tightening things down and see whether or not that helped. Going about one past. Ooh, we picked up some more there, didn't we? Yeah. We're about ten and a half now. 
Oh. I can probably try loosening the Allens on the back here. See if that helps. Actually, let's raise the Z up. Let's see if it gets much worse. Oh, yeah. Picked up a few thou there. Which tells me that this thing's bent at an angle, not simply shifted off to one side. Okay, and I don't know how much of that is the uh, uh, the rod itself. The other checks doesn't seem to be the rod. So, hmm. reality is, is if I'm going to put it on here, grab it from the inside, cut the outside and the critical bore on the inside here, they'll be perfectly concentric. Then when I take it over, I'll be off, you know, uh, up to ten thousandths or so when I put the uh, the fillet on the backside, which isn't critical at all. Um, but ten thousandths is that'd be, you know, good five thou per side. Uh, I think I'm going to have to cut one or two and, and try it and see. Um, and I may take the jaws out and look at them and see if maybe there's some something, you know, screwy with the jaws there, too. 